So what do you guys think of this? Uh, this is the artwork of Joanne Sharp that I found on her Facebook page today. I just love being able to study underneath her and learn about watercolors, etc. I don't think I'll ever be quite this good, but boy, I have a lot of joy uh, um, traveling along with her, and I'm already signed up for next year's class. All right, so I'm going to show you a couple things. I found this on nobody's Facebook in particular. It was one of those more generalized ones. And it says, beautiful Christmas tree in, is it Lucci, Italy? Looks like a quilt motif. Beautiful. It looks like specifically a Paula Nadelstern quilt. Wouldn't you people say? I mean, that's what it looks like. Just spectacular. And I don't think I can blow it up right here. I don't even know how they did it. But Paula, your influence is monumental worldwide. And speaking of people who've been on the quilt show, I got hold of Katie Pasquini yesterday. She lives in Fortuna, California, where the earthquake was. And she was fine. She didn't have electrical, so I didn't want to text too much because you don't want to, you know, run out of your power and stuff like that. But she said there were just a lot of things on the floor. And hopefully somebody came by, you know, and checked out her house to make sure it was a-okay. You know, um, I did not feel the earthquake at all, uh, which is it, well, eh, now it's about five hours away, so really not, although it's on the same fault line that runs down here, but did not feel it. All right, um, then Frida, uh, Frida Anderson, who has also been on the show, actually Katie Pasquini was one of our, I'm backing up, Katie Pasquini was uh, one of our legends. You might want to look her up and you can see what her adorable little house looks like in Fortuna, California. So Frida Anderson is another person who's been on the show. And this is not a quilt, but this is a wonderful Santa that she has made. And really, truly, what struck me were the buttons. Boy, I, what buttons? Buttons, buttons. Who's got the button? Isn't that adorable? I mean, we've all got 10,000 buttons of that size. I, I know, we do, we do, we do. So, I love it when I go on Facebook and find different things. Carol sent me this. And um, Sue Spargo, the other day, put out a little article on doing your own thing. In other words, taking her thing and then doing your thing, and she had examples, and uh, Carol's was in there. And Carol said, she sent this to me, she said she would never have had the nerve to mix silk, that's the background, with the wool on top. But after playing with the silk, she uh, realized she wanted to give it a whirl. Here's the thing, what I hope I bring to you is curiosity, is wanting to learn, try new things, get out of your comfort zone. It was David Taylor who said, I like being in my comfort, in my box. Well, I just think sometimes it's nice to peek outside. Uh, I remember I took a class from Margaret Miller at Asilomar a million years ago, 35, let's just say. And we have a show with her too. And while her quilts are spectacular, I learned about the second day in, I will never work this way. At the time, she was doing big, giant templates and stuff like that. And I called her to the back of the room and I said, Hey, Margaret, can I just do my own thing back here? Because I will, I will never finish this. I will never um, do it. I'd rather work on something else. And she said, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. And that, to me, was the epitome of a graceful teacher because she gave me permission to at least recognize I wasn't going to work this way and then move on. Hey, I gave it a shot. And if you take a workshop and you learn that you're never going to work that way, that's okay too, you know? So congratulations, Carol. Thank you. I didn't, I did not recognize your name when Sue was going through all these different ways people were taking her thing and doing your own thing. So that's, that's exciting. I know. Okay. Then, okay, Pam sent these. Remember those buttons that I did on the show with the embroidery? Well, I've got some from that show that are on, on wool, dark, dark wool, like this. And she needed some last-minute gifts. 
I said, yep. So she, I can't remember quite where she said she got those little frames, but they, she said she did these four in one night and there she had spectacular little gifts to give away. So thank you so much, Pam. I would not have thought to do that. Um, I mean, even if you're going somewhere Saturday, you got time to whip this up, people. <laughs> then this is a Susan. Um, Susan Skeel sent me this with the embroidery, with the buttons and all of that. And I went out of my mind. And then I, I wrote her, I said, where did you get this? And she said, on Facebook. But that is so clever. And I guess probably... I'm putting my nose on it. What the artist did was tacked down the buttons first and then did all the embroidery. Here's my thing. I just, I remember hoop art from 35, 40 years ago, and I'm just having a hard time jamming on these hoop arts, but man, that is super, super cool. Maybe I should do it on wool and do it that way. Yeah, maybe I should and then just frame it up or whatever, however I want. And then Susan also sent me this. Okay, so she traced out, let me come back to this. She traced, or she bought the panel and she decided to try Meg Hockey's technique on what we're gonna be working on. So this show, if you watch ch uh, chapter two and chapter three, you will learn how to work with crayons. And it's not just a matter of slapping the crayon down on the fabric. There's very thoughtful and purposeful ways that you do this. And so uh, she sent me this, this, and the next thing I did was I ran out and bought these. <laughs> I got a bunch of crayons with a sharpener. My mom always loved getting crayons. And in Meg's show, she suggests that you get the big one so that you've got all these beautiful shades. So you know what I did yesterday afternoon? I tried it. And, I, um, and this is what I did. So flippin' fun. I haven't said it yet. Let me, let me do it this way. I haven't said it yet, but... Um, I, I, I marked it with a brown, brown, one of those archive pens, and then I did what Meg said to do. This is beautiful. You know, it's so funny because I thought, okay, we're doing a show about working with crayons, and the thought is, how, how can it be that hard to work with crayons? It's not hard, but what she shares in that show is pivotal and I actually went and watched it yesterday so let's take a look so you can write down the show number right here here we go see the and then Sally Frey is on that show too Sally also is up in Fortuna I have not heard from her yet a lot of talent is up there okay so we got that all right so what I want to talk about today starting with are going to be threads and how to take a very simple stitch you know that um, these threads that came in our kit are from House of Embroidery, from the bald guy in the kilt, and we guessed at what threads to get for you. Then we got the threads, and then I stitched the, the top, all right? And I learned some really important things about this thread. As you can see, I want to show you, this. these threads are exceedingly subtle. Okay, let me get rid of that thing there. And beautiful. Uh, case in point, I think that this right in here really speaks volumes. The way it has the subtle gradations of colors. It's not super in your face. And there's nothing wrong with super in your face stuff, but it it's just, it's just lovely. Um, it is very soft. It is very... Um, some of the threads are fragile. And what I found out is that the lighter colors are more fragile than the darker colors. And the reason is that the lighter colors, the original yarn that they're working with um, is not white. And so to get 
these beautiful colors, they have to bleach it white and then put the color on it. So as soon as you throw bleach on it, you know it's going to start breaking down the fibers a little bit. But I discovered, excuse me, ways to get around this. And what I'm going to tell you right here, right now, is super, super important, okay? So put your listening ears on. Um, it's going to keep you from having it fray and and etc. Because I was like, going, what in the world is going on with these lighter colors? I've worked with black thread before, and black can be problematic because apparently they over dye, over dye, over dye, over dye. Well, in this case, they have to strip it back and then put the dye on it. And it was the lighter colors I was having problems with, to be quite frankly, quite frankly. <laughs> so here are my leftovers. All right. Um, the fabric is just 100% cotton, Linda. I know they're beautiful. They're absolutely beautiful. We got them from the same place. We had it made from the same place who uh, is doing the background fabric for next year BOM. They can, we can design and they can print. And we do have some of those panels left, all right? Um, the kits are long gone and so is the thread. But I don't know, the success of this whole project has been monumental. And I can see doing um, more projects and bringing in more of this thread because it's just so lovely. All right. So, well, whoa, what happened there? <laughs> I think I hit a, I hit a video number, a video thing. All right. So let's see what will show well. I think this is my favorite in the group. And then I, I want to talk about green thread. I got to find the end of it here. There. That'll work. Okay, first tip. First tip. That's it. That's the length. I would say that's about 15 inches, all right? So I am going to say cut this thread right here, down here. And then I'm going to do something really, really weird. And it's just with this thread. Um, it's not necessary with your DMCs and a wonder fill and those threads. But with this thread, you can literally feel the wrap, like in a, in a, with a rope. So I close my eyes. It's really weird, okay? I think I'm going in the direction of the wrap, okay? Let me try the other way. Absolutely. Th this was the correct direction. This is a smoother pull than the other direction, all right? So what I'm gonna do is if the wrap's going down like this, which it is, is I'm gonna put a little knot at the end of it. And then that way it ensures that um, the wrap is going in the correct direction, all right? Then I'm going to grab a needle. And I can remember Probably when we first started doing all this stuff together, people would say, well, what needle do you use? And I go, I don't know, I'll just grab something. Well, I know now, <laughs> okay? I like, when I'm doing embroideries, to use uh, Sashiko needles. They are kind of my, a go-to for me. And this is Lucien's. If you got a kit, it came in the kit. We do sell them separately. And in, whoops, and in them are different size needles. The reason I like these needles is that, let me see how close down I can get, is that a lot of needles, and I, and I, you know, repeat, 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 but, you know, who knows who hears what, what time. The needles stay, I mean, there's a little bit of a going out there, but not very much. What's the problem, John? Is thread color fast? Is the thread color fast? I do not know. I did not test it, but I'm, if, if, it would, if it were to run, I would then go and use my Synthropol. Okay, I, I don't know. Good question. If you want to test it, if you want to test it, um, make some little stitches of each color and throw it in water and see what happens. Yes? Okay, so on, with this stuff, how many threads am I using? And I'm, with this stuff, and like a pearl, like a Wonderfill, like... Um, the stuff that are on balls, you use the entire thread. I will talk about when you are using like a DMC stuff that you get from Joann's on a skein. That's a whole nother thing, and I'll talk about that in a moment. You people are smart. 
Okay, so let me thread this. And the one thing I don't have with me is my needle threader. So let's see if Sue Spargo's trip works. And it is. You wet it, you smash it flat, and then you bring the needle up to the thread and it goes through. Well, kind of. Um, Sue Spargo sells this stuff too. Okay. I bought a bunch of needle threaders on Amazon. You got like a hundred for 10 bucks and they break, but who cares? Cause I've got 95 more. Ah, okay. You know, I may, I did something really, really stupid and I'll tell you what it is. I put hand lotion on. That was really stupid. Okay. Well, that's how we learn. Okay. So let me hold it in there. Ta-da! Okay. So you can see this thread is not that long. And this is going to be more the case, I mean, more the case with the lighter threads. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do with my little purple disappearing pen, a little heart. And I'm going to do the stem stitch. Originally, I did the chain stitch and the stem stitch on, on the golden one. And I found on this one, I did chain and stem, whoops, before I did all the filling in on this one. And the chain stitch, I'll show you the chain stitch um, at some point here, but the chain stitch uses up a lot more thread than the stem. And the, it's the green I'm worried about, about you running out, but I've got some strategies for that. All right, so I am a left-hander. You will, oh, might be nice if I put the camera on, right? <laughs> I'm going to come up. I am going to grab the thread with my right hand, my right finger, and then I'm going to come in, down, and come up right before that thread. Now, I'm gonna push a lot with my thumb. That's what I like to do. If I were really gonna do this for a marathon, I would probably put on a thimble pad here on my thumb. It really, they're great and they work. Okay, so I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna go up a little bit because I wanna show you what I'm doing. Typically when I say I'm binding a quilt or something like that, I just pull with the needle. Don't do that. When we're working with any fragile thread, thread don't do that. I, I come pull to the side with my right hand, stitch with my left, opposite, if you're the other kind of hander. When I come through, I'm gonna come through and then I'm going to pull with the thread. I'm not gonna pull with the needle. Come through, see how I'm holding it now with these two fingers, or maybe three? And because the wrap is going in a in the correct direction, it and I'm not pulling with the thread or with the needle, I'm pulling with the thread, it's less stress. The other thing is like if I'm working with metallics, I will periodically change what is going through the eye of the needle with the thread. So I'm varying what's being pulled. Okay, so down here. And the, and the key here is to have the wrap going the same way, the stitches, all right? For down here, I'm going to come here. It's my little tail. So I've made it too long the other way. Oh, come on. There we go. And then I'm going to come up right here. And I won't have any collapsed stitches for going around the corner. So, okay, came through, pull with the thread. This is so incredibly meditative, it is beyond. Now, Meg Hockey does a different sort of stitch, which she shows in the third chapter of the show. See how I just keep pulling it? Oh, the other thing is I don't know if this happens to you, but my thread gets twisted, and I don't know if that's I'm a left-hander or right-hander thing. So I always untwist it every so often. And then that, and then that, um, 
helps with it not breaking. And if you don't know how to untwist it, just go like this and let it spin. All right. I'm going to come in here. Another thing you can do if it is exceedingly fragile, or I did actually, I started to, I started to use my thread magic every time. Um, you're going to see how grunky mine is, but it helps smooth the fibers down. Once I've determined which way they're going, look at that, you can see I used it. Um, I will, again, don't pull from the needle, pull from the thread and get some of that grease on there, that wax or whatever it is. Okay. I can even, okay, this is going to sound crazy. I can, e I can feel a difference pulling through with the thread magic on it. All right. Let's pretend like I'm done. So this is how I would end it. I would either go right here next to it or right here, but I think I want to go right here. Kind of make a little loop over it. And I, I've watched some YouTubes on this and there's different ways. Gosh, that's just beautiful. Let's look at the back. All right. See how nice and evenly these are. In embroidery, I have learned that if you're going to win a ribbon, they want it like this, where there's no white space. But I'm not going for a ribbon. I'm going for a beautiful project. So what I'm going to do now... And so basically this is a one, well, it's not a one ply, but you're not going to separate it. The next step you are going to separate, I'll show you. And then just take a little snip and there you go. Now, because we've put the fabric prep on the back of it, these knots are not going to show through and there's not like these little tails here and there's not going to be, um, stretching or warping with the fabric when it's pulled on the bias. All right. So here is some embroidery floss. Let me go on the big screen. The big screen. Here's some embroidery floss. I'm going to, I'm going to make you a little jealous. I have every single color in the world that I bought off Lindy up in Columbus, Columbia. Oh, <laughs> now these don't have the variation, but when you have to fill in like the seed stitching I'm doing on the background of my autumn one, fine. Okay. So this was pre-cut. I'm here is um this the the thread that you guys are thinking of, okay? This is your DMC that you get at Joanne's local quilt shop whatever that has six six. Six six <laughs> strands. And when that's the case, I like to work with two strands, but I do something really different with this thread. I don't pull off two strands. I make this extra long, extra long. So when it's folded in half, it's about the right length. And even with this stuff, never go more than 18 inches ever. All right. Which would mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, but let me show you what I'm going to do. There's, I'm going to pull off one strand. Get out of there, you little booger. There you go. All right. And then, this is a little more hard to thread. I'm going to fold it in half. Yeah, if you get into this, and I really have, you're going to want to buy those 100 needle threaders for 29 cents. Okay. So you have two raw edges here, ends. Oh, that one went through easy. And then down here, you have a loop. Okay. So the loop is going to be the bottom end of it. I'm not, I don't have to worry about the wrap on this at all. All right. So then what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to come, oh, let me start up over here, here, no, wait a minute, let me do it from the top, I guess you can do it either from the top or the bottom, it doesn't really matter, but I'm going through, there's my little loop-de-doop, right, and then I'm going to come up one thread of fabric away, and there's your knot, that's it. There is no knot. All right. And then you just do your own thing again. And somebody just said something. I'm old enough to remember when embroidery floss came on bra braided. Yes. Um, remember the show when Rian, Rianne Elise shows when she braided her thread to keep it neat. Would that be something to try with this thread? Gosh, I'd have to go watch again. I, I, I honestly don't remember, but sure, why not? I, don't, I, I vaguely remember that, vaguely. And so what you're going to see here is that like this DMC stuff, is that what it is? Yeah. Look at how juicier this is versus this. It's just juicier. It's like it's like working, like I said the other day, working with grandma's beautiful crystal versus a red solo cup. And there is nothing wrong with a red solo cup, if you know what I mean. There we go. Again, you could wax it. Don't let it get all spun up on you because that creates knots too. And then here's another way you can finish. There's not a right way or a wrong way. You can also, I, you could go like I did right here, okay? Or you could go through one thing and then go like this, kind of like a French knot. Here, let me do it again for you. One, two. And then snip. Also, never snip like this always like slide and, and, and snip, okay? So let's talk about strategy here. Um, where's this one? If I had a do-over, all right, if I had a do-over, I guess we do want to look on here. Um, first of all, I would do, I, I would do the center fruit, okay? And then I would do greens. Actually, this one I did section by section. <laughs> Here's the fruit. This I did section by section, marking each area with this pen, knowing 100% that it will go away. Okay, I had tons of brown left over, tons. Green, it's gone, okay? So what I think, if I had a do-over, is I would do the cherry stems brown. And in this case, I've done the stem stitch and then I'm going and I'm wrapping just to bring more brown into it because I've got the brown in the stems also. So I think that's kind of fun. And that's just simply going through sliding, 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 sliding. Um, if you run out of green, just use another green. But here, I think I need to do, let me get this up higher. So we can have a better look at what's going on here. John's coming in, which means her questions. You can see that I kind of went from, I went dark here, dark, light, dark, light, dark, dark, light. Kind of this, these skinny ones were dark, and then a couple of the other little ones. And I would do the stems first, and then I would do the next part. Yes. Oh, I got questions. Okay. Okay. So... On this one, be, the green is, you're just barely, you're going to make it by the skin of your chinny chin chin on this one. On the, um, let's look at this. On this one, that's, okay, on the right-hand side one, you've got three greens, basically. You've got the two that are on the right-hand side, and then the one that's to the left of the red. So it's, it's not as paramount is the jewel one on the left hand side. So I'm just giving you strategy. And if you run out, it is not the end of the world. 
All right. So let me see. Do I ever put the thread through thread conditioner? That's, I don't know exactly what thread conditioner is, but, ah, come on. But I think that's what this is. Okay. I, 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 I think, well, here. Oh, I don't have an unopened one here. I think that's what this is. And yeah, it helps, especially with these hand-dyed ones, you know. When you work with things that are so exotic like this, like Dupuyani silk or whatever, um, it's it's going to be a little more challenging to work with, but the results are totally worth it. Okay, I'm old enough to remember when embroidery floss came braided. Yes. with D Okay, Kathy says with DMC, she dampens the thread on a sponge, which takes the kinks out. And then Sue says, doubling the threads avoid knots. Best trick ever with one thread. I agree. Okay, conditioner, we've done that. Thread, thread from the loop, so only putting one piece through the needle eye. Sue says, um, when you're doing the long one, I can't do it with the loop. The loop won't go through for me. So obviously you do whatever works for you. I, I just seem to do better with the two raw ends. Isn't that crazy? Um, and one thing I'll say about these crazy needles, their eyes are pretty darn big. We totally ran out. And I told Suzanne, I asked Suzanne, when are we getting them in the store? And she said, they're on order. And she looked, she said, oh, they're in today. So if you're looking for a little treat for yourself, I recommend these. Um, again, this is what they are. You know, I don't know that I would buy it singularly, but if you're buying something else, you might as well just roll a little packet of these in. And then what I do with these needles, because I can easily mix up my needles on my lap app, um, we made, a, they come with a little pocket, but I made this, or actually Kristen made this one for me. I just put those needles in there. And like today, when I'm done working with this needle, I put it here. And then I know that is what I will be working with down, that I know these are the good needles, all right? And as soon as you work with, one other thing, as soon as you work um, with a needle, and this is especially true in hand quilting, and it starts going, you can hear it going, ee, ee, ee. The, the needle is trash. And what it is, is that the, your oils or whatever has worn off the outside edge of the needle. So it's trash. Hasn't happened with these, but ha when I'm hand quilting, I go through a pack of needles a pop. Um, use green in various places. So if you run out using a different green will blend in. Exactly. I just wanted to warn you about that. And the color that seemed to be the um, most fragile in both cases were the light peach. That was the one that was like, whoa, what is going on here? And I thought maybe that, well, the thread very well could have been old too, but um, I realized you can feel it. It's so amazing. And I'm back to the, our threads here. You can feel the wrap. Okay, John? Um, do I make smaller stitches on the curves? Um, I make small stitches, period. All right, just let's take a look here. I make small stitches, period. Those puppies are small. So no, and just remember, if you come to like a point or like that or that, just anchor it down and then keep going again. If you forget to do it and it starts collapsing the stitch, you'll know what that means when you get there. Um, you, then you can just go take the same color thread and anchor it down. All right. So let me see if there's any other questions here. So as we get into the holidays, um, we're going to have all the kids here. And my dear, dear friend Karen uh, can't go to her daughter's because one of the kids has COVID. So she's coming and um, it'll be a lot of fun. So what I would like to do is tell everybody I'll be back next Wednesday. Um, I know I, I hate starting on a Wednesday because that's kind of the, you guys show up on Monday, you show up on Friday and Wednesday, not so much, but you know, these are all pre-recorded. I've given you plenty of homework that you can work on your panels. Um, you can, again, buy the PDF on the site and print it out and trace it. I think Suzanne said we might have about 60 of the, um, of the pre-printed ones left. And just stitch away. 
If you're going to try this crayon thing, what I would suggest you do is watch that Meg Hockey show, get another piece of fabric, and some other floss. I, I would not use this floss unless, although you've got plenty of brown in both cases that you can use, try it with that just to get the jam on it. Don't try it with the green. You're going to be, save the, save the forest, save the green. And just practice with it and see. And Meg tells you how to, how to set it, how to shadow. It, it, it was good stuff. It's not pre-recorded. It's recorded. It's recorded. It, it will be pre-recorded as of a minute when I hang up. <laughs> so, happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. I wish you all great blessings as we go through the holidays. And I am so, so, um, I'm so grateful that we are here together. And Betty Jo... Wonderful threads are beautiful too. I just happen to like the gradation of these ones and the fact they're fair traded. Do I own Wonderfill? <laughs> of course I do. I have them all. <laughs> I think I'm worse with thread than I am with fabric. And we do have beautiful threads to play with. So, okay. Um, probably should go with the wrap direction when using thread condition. Yes, I would agree with that. All right, you guys, Merry, Merry Christmas. I, I am pretty sure I've been a good girl, and um, I'm so happy to be here with you today. I don't even know how to wrap it up, but we'll see you next Wednesday, okay? Bye-bye.